It's another delicious day here in the Let's Make Food From Food Kitchen, and today it's time to cook the corned beef brisket that we did the brine for a couple of videos back. So this is the brisket that I had done the brine for. It's rinsed and ready to go. If you're doing the brine and then straight to cooking it, make sure you thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly rinse it off, okay? So the next thing I need to do, I have a pan here with a cooking rack that is important to keep it elevated and i have my oven preheated to 325 degrees and i have all of my seasonings i went ahead and measured them all out because there's quite a few in here i've got bay leaves i have allspice berries i have um, some cardamom pods mustard seeds coriander seeds i already said allspice berries i've got um some fennel and some uh, kosher salt so there's quite a bit of things in here why do I have it separated like this so this one I'm gonna put into my mortar and pestle and this one I'm not because I like to have some of the whole seeds on top of my brisket so I'm gonna crush these but I'm not even gonna crush them completely okay so I'm gonna start by taking my bay leaves and breaking them up some to get that started this can be kind of messy because it can start to pop out of your um, bowl here. So what I typically do is pour all of my stuff in there that I want. Okay, then I put my hand over. So my pestle is gonna go in here and I'm going to do it with my hand covering so that little balls that, you know, if you hit it just right, it's gonna go bing. It might hit you in the eye, I don't know. Be uncomfortable. <laughs> So while I'm doing this, but first let me say that you don't have to crush them completely. They don't have to go into a powdered consistency. You just wanna pop them open, break them down some, but it doesn't have to be completely smashed. Okay, so I'm just gonna work this for a minute. I know I've said this before in other videos. Uh, I am releasing this around St. Patrick's Day because, you know, why not? But corned beef brisket is not in Ireland, the traditional dish. They have rashers, they call it, it's bacon for them, it's rashers, and sometimes potatoes and then cabbage. And I learned this from one of their famous storytellers over there, her name is Liz Weir. I studied over there in Ireland for about a month, maybe, 2009, 10, it's been a while. <laughs> anyway, she told me a couple of years later, I was back here in the States and she was over, you know, in Ireland. And I had asked her about something and she goes, yeah, sorry, we don't do that for, <laughs> it was corned beef or something. She's like, we don't do that for St. Patrick's Day. That's not what we typically do. And I was like, oh, I didn't know that, okay. I'm just breaking up my bay leaf a little bit more. So now I know that that's not, however, here in the United States, it's what we typically celebrate with. So I'm doing the honey roasted parsnips to go with this instead of the potatoes or the cabbage. So here we go. I think this is good. The consistency has broken down some of my seeds. And then if you want, you can go ahead and pour that in there because you have to mix it together anyway. So, and I'm just gonna give it a stir that way. I don't have to get a separate bowl and make a mess. Okay, so next I have four cups of water and I'm pouring it right in the bottom of my pan. Now, if you have a larger pan, maybe do six cups. You wanna have a, a good inch on the bottom of your pan is kind of the goal. So the measurement of the water isn't quite as important as having a good layer of water. Now, you have some options here. You can leave this just the way that it is. If you feel like there's excessive fat and you don't want it on there, feel free to trim it off, okay? For me, I'm gonna leave it like this. I did some trimming already a little, and I'm just going to start taking my mixture and sprinkling it all over the top, and I want a pretty good coating. And now, if some falls in the water, that's totally fine. It's gonna steam, and that flavor in the water and the steam will come up to the bottom of the brisket. So knock yourself out. This is something I really enjoy having 
though my spouse does not, and so I don't make it very often. My mom enjoys it, and so I will definitely be saving a chunk of this for mom. Okay, there we go, all done. Now, last, before I start this cooking, get that bay leaf up there, I need to take my foil and try and tightly cover the top of my baking pan. Okay, I wanna keep the liquid trapped inside for now. So, this is going to bake at 325 degrees for two hours. Then I'm just going to quickly open the oven, take off the foil and bake it for another hour. After that's done, take it out of the oven, let it rest for 10 minutes, a good 10 minutes before you transfer it to your um, slicing board. <laughs> There's a word for it, right? Okay. Um, so I will see you at that point after I have let it bake, taken off the foil, bake some more, and then let it rest. And that's the point where I'll come back and see all of your beautiful faces. See you soon. Brisket is done. It rested probably closer to 20 minutes because I was busy doing my parsnips, which you saw in the last video. So I'm just gonna go ahead and slice this and we're gonna slice it against the grain. And why do we do that, anybody? So that it doesn't fall apart when you slice it. Look at that. Oh, that looks just beautiful. It's got some moisture in there still. Mmm, fabulous. Okay, I'm just gonna slice the whole thing. Now, I've got some other videos coming up that I'm going to, I'm gonna make corned beef hash with this brisket. Not all of it, I'm having some for lunch today. And of course, I'm gonna send some to my mom. She's gonna get a slice or two with some parsnips. Look at that. Now, I, this looks just fabulous. I just didn't even bother with a fork, oh my gosh. I say it time and time and time again. Homemade, there's nothing that beats it. There's nothing you can get at the store that's as good as this is. Mm. First thing with flavor. So, so, so delicious. Oh my gosh. I love it. Mm. On that note, I'm gonna wrap up here and then I'm gonna go eat my lunch. Thanks for joining me here today in the Let's Make Food From Food kitchen. From my kitchen to yours, let's make food from food. That's one boy puppy.